So welcome everybody. Um, um, I just want to um, give my voice my thanks to Deborah and Michelle, who really graciously said right away when I asked if they would do a program, um, said yes immediately without any reservations. And you know, I always like I always say is during this time we have found so many people in the shul and outside the shul who have these amazing. Um, side careers and 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 hobbies that they do and um, and it's so wonderful when they're able to share it with us now Deborah and Michelle actually are both certified move managers um, they're affiliated with the National Association for move managers and have a certification for aging in place and um, so they really know their stuff. They're not just, you know, kind of doing this for fun. And I personally have seen them in action. I refer them to somebody and they not only do an incredible job, but they also act as kind of unofficial therapists and um, really are just so lovely and so sweet and gracious that, because as you know, when anyone has to move or downsize or get rid of things, you know, Deborah's not just looking for things for her thrift shop, for, for the Shul thrift shop. Mm -hmm. She's also really trying to help. And a lot of times we end up doing a lot of therapy, helping people get rid of their stuff. Um, so I just thought that this would be wonderful because we're all trying to always downsize and get rid of things and and wonder if where we're living is the right place for us. So without further ado, I want to turn this over to Michelle and Deborah and thank you again so much for willing to come today. Thanks everyone for sharing thank your you. time, for welcoming us, in, welcoming us into your homes. Um, so what we did say to Judy is there's information that we'd like to share that might seem intuitive. Uh, however, right now, as all of us have been kind of stuck in our homes and are just coming up for air, uh, these are uh, some really important points we'd like to share. And we think that, we hope that they'll be beneficial and, 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 and informative to all of you. So, um, Michelle and I, our goal when we work with any of our clients, and this is not a solicitation, uh, but our goal is to give our clients as much autonomy and honor their independence, give them the tools they need to live safely and to do it all cost efficiently. Um, so, you know, at any stage of life, but especially in senior years, it's important that everyone is, to pay attention to everyone's uh, desire to um, be conscious of their financial health. So, um, so that's what we do. Um, so this was this was on our thanks, Jay. This was on our our little flyer, um, and these are things that that we hear often. You know that our clients love their homes and they're cluttered, but they don't know what to do with their stuff or um they love their house so much but they and they really don't have any interest in moving um so the, the 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 slide that you're looking at here is really more when we have conversations um with the children of older people but these are issues and that's how it's presented but these are really issues that you have uh, possibly have going on within your mind as well so you might be nervous about the stairs that you have in your house it may be a little bit harder to navigate. Um, at some point, it's possible someone in your household might, um, you know, hurt a hip and need to go into rehab. And then, how do they come back into their homes? So these are all um, topics that we're going to cover and go over to try to avoid any sort of falls, and also to give you some ideas to make your home safer. So. Facts about falls, uh, you know, kind of addressing the elephant in the room. Seniors are at a greater risk of falling in their day-to-day -day activities. Falls are the top cause of fatal and non-fatal injuries in Americans age 65 and older. And of people age 65 or older, 60% of falls that sent people to the ER occurred in their own homes. And if you think about how much we're spending time in our homes right now, it can be daunting. I mean, we have a member of our community who recently had a fall and it's so debilitating. The idea of anyone having to navigate something like that with stairs or with the daily obstacles that we have to, um, we have to navigate, it can be, can be frightening. Um, so 
four things that you can do today, now, for free, to prevent yourself from falling is, well, one of them is um, you can have your eyes and feet checked. And I know that a lot of people are hesitant to go into their doctors or into, you know, different buildings right now, but a lot of these things can actually be done through telemed. You can make an appointment with your doctor and you can have these things checked online. Um, another idea is to improve, um, to exercise and improve your balance and your strength. I mean, it, Judy offers this amazing chair yoga and right. the, uh, there, there's, there's no reason why any of us can't do something. Even if you're sitting in your chair, if you're- Especially now that yeah. we're sitting more than we normally do in our chairs. Right. Do something, pick up a can, pick up a can of, uh, of corn and just flex your muscle or anything to keep your muscles agile to prevent uh, yourselves from, um, from, from, from being so stiff that, I mean, I'm, I'm younger than some of you and I know when I stiff for a long time, I, I ache. I don't know how my, my parents do it, but even so it's just keep, keeping your, 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 your blood going and we all, and I know that a lot of you have um, some medical conditions. So you know what your doctors encourage you to do and, and what you can't do. Just be mindful, just be mindful. Um, have, your, have, you, yeah, have your healthcare provider review your medicines. Um, that's also an easy one that can be, if you don't wanna go in, you can go over them um, on the phone with your doctors. Um, I, I don't know if, how many of you, but I, I love using WestMed because all of my doctors have access to all of the medications I'm taking. So I never have to worry about there being a problem with the different medications because everything's on my chart. Um, so it, it just makes it more seamless. We, had, we just recently had a client and his family was certain that he had early onset dementia. He was, his medications were just off. He was taking too much of something. He was, it was just so imbalanced that until they finally got it settled down or, or uh, uh, regulated. regulated, they were, they were, they were really concerned. Um, and lastly, which we're going to talk about is make your house safer. So if you look at this slide, you don't have to tell us which one you identify with, but do you mm -hmm. identify more with the one to the left or more to the one to the right? And neither is any kind of statement of, of who you are. It's just, we acquire things in the course of our lives. We love our stuff and our stuff uh, creates you know, memories and it gives us opportunities to reflect back on happy times and things that we've enjoyed and done. But it can become a hazard if those things are in different parts of our daily uh, course of, of travel, if you will, in our homes. So it's something important to, to consider. One, the three of the main concepts to keep it very safe where you're living, you wanna make sure that there's adequate lighting everywhere. And I know this also sounds pretty obvious, but I can't tell you how many times Deborah and I have gone into a home and there are lights out. In, in a lot of different places. It just makes it, it's more of a falling hazard. You can't see where things are. Um, it's a great idea to have a stock of light bulbs in your home. So when a light goes out, you know that it can be easily replaced. Um, two really big trip, tripping hazards are cords and rugs. So you really wanna make sure that if you have a rug that it's um, secured. secured to the floor um, so that you can't, trip over it um, and cords should be wrapped up as close to the wall as possible so that you won't have any chance of tripping over it. Yeah. And your medications should be labeled and easily, accept, easily accessible. Uh, you know, I know from personal experience and from our, our professional experience, there are people who have a a, a, a menu of, of medications and oftentimes they don't need to be taking some of them and just by rote they continue taking them. So this goes back to the, the uh, suggestion of checking in with your doctor about your medications, making sure you're taking the right medications and or that you don't you're or that you're not taking medications you don't need anymore. Um, so yes. Um, Fire safety. 
This is a, a I mean, they're all very important, but um, some of these stats might surprise some of you. Um, your smoke detectors, do you, do you check your smoke detectors often? You know, you can read as, along with me, according to the US Fire Administration, smoke detectors should be tested at least once a month and that the batteries should be, be replaced at least once or twice a year. You know, when was the last time you checked the, do you know how to check your smoke detector? There's a little button that you need to depress and it, and it, should, it should sound uh, to make sure that it's, it's functioning. If you're not sure, call your fire department. That's what they're there for. They wanna do fire prevention. They don't want to do, uh, you know, fire crisis control. Um, on an average, more than a thousand Americans age 65 and older die each year in home fires and more than 2000 are injured. So we're gonna talk about some ways to help prevent this in the next few slides, but these are really profoundly uh, frightening statistics, at least they are to us. Right, and, and, we're, and we're not, we're not, we're not, we're not trying to scare you. We're just trying to really show you what the truth is so that you're aware. No, 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 go back. Oh, oh. Second, right, sorry. Um, um, yes, yeah, so we want to make sure, you know, do you have a fire extinguisher? Does it work? Where what is it? Right. Do you know how to use it? And when was the last time it was checked? I mean, we just did a, a person's home. Her fire extinguisher was from like 1975, which great she had one. I wouldn't have known you had to check them. They expire. So these are things that, and if it's too much for you to do that, they're not expensive to have, by the way. You know, you want to keep one in your kitchen, obviously, if you have a laundry room. But um, if you don't have someone to check, you can always call us. We're happy to help. And uh, as just obviously as a courtesy, uh, everyone needs, needs an advocate or someone that they can, they can call on. So we're happy to be that for you. Um, okay. Um, fire safety and food prep. Uh, burns from fire and hot liquids are the, uh oh, sorry, uh, psych, are the leading cause of burns and injuries among older people. Is your stove gas or electric, right? Do you use an electric kettle uh, to make coffee instead of using a regular, a regular teapot, a uh, tea, tea kettle? Because what we have to think about is if let's say you have a gas stove and let's say you fall or something happens, you don't need fire you know, flaming because you, you can't get to turn it off. Or maybe, God forbid, if you're, if you're wearing a, 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 a nightgown or a, a robe and your sleeve can get caught in the flame to, more easily than you realize. So we love the idea of Keurigs and we love the idea of electric kettles. It, it heats water so quickly, it's easy, it turns off, and there's very, very much, much less hazard involved as opposed to anything on the stove. Mm -hmm. um, um, if you have a toaster oven and, you know, if you only have two people in your home or one person or one person in your home, it's just easier and faster, more convenient to, to use and utilize your toaster oven as opposed to having to turn on the whole oven. Or pulling in the oven door rack out. Oftentimes we have, depending on the size of your home, you have to reach up for the oven, uh, for the, the shelf in the oven. And if sometimes things fall out or it slides and this can just help, again, prevent one more potential accident. Mm -hmm. Where's your microwave? This is one we love. Like a lot of people, their microwaves are above the cooktop. And if you think about it, if a person puts something in the uh, microwave to heat up, and let's say it's soup, it's, you obviously want it to be hot. And if you pull it down and it falls, there's a strong chance that, that you could get burned. So something so simple is to put your microwave or have someone put your microwave on your countertop. This way it's at arm's length, it's easy for you to reach and, it, at, and access, and the potential for burns or spills goes way down. Bathroom safety tips, all right. Well, um, while it may be one of the smallest rooms in the home, the bathroom can be one of the most dangerous. Um, Deborah and I work a lot with this, um, sort of, I guess, retrofitting bathrooms for people that are remaining in their homes. We want to put up safety bars and make sure the floors aren't as slippery. All of those things make the bathroom much safer. So go ahead. No, that's right. no So you can, um, you see in the picture here that there are um, several bars in the showers. 
um, bars even by the sink and the toilet just to help you maneuver more easily. Um, if you see down towards the bottom, there's a rug and I put in, we put an X over it. Um, rugs can be dangerous in the bathroom, especially if they get slippery, you could very easily step on that mat, a rug and, and slide. Um, Deborah and I recently worked with um, a couple and they moved into a new apartment and they had marble floors um, and that were beautiful and they wanted you know to enjoy them so we found a um, a like like a, a, like a varnish yeah. almost that that is applied to the, the floor and it has a grit but so in the bathroom you can't see it the floors still look beautiful but there's there's little chance of, of slipping in the bathroom and we like to talk about this because when people think about putting in safety um, equipment um, or accessories in their in their homes they think they have to do a huge renovation and the truth is you don't grab bars are, are about 30 35 dollars a piece um, you, uh, any handyman can install them. Uh, you don't have to put them everywhere, but the key is to have somebody not just come in and put them in, but to watch how you maneuver in your, in your home and how you maneuver in your, in your bathroom. So, and, and you see there's bars in the shower. There's also a device that we just installed, which is almost like a, um, like a fireman's pole. It's a suspension rod from ceiling to, to the bottom of the shower. And it has a moving yet lockable um, arm yeah. that um, that can travel, if you will, with you in the shower, so that you always have something to grip. It's not, oh my gosh, where's that bar? It's always there for you to to reach reach for. And we we talk about these things, and a lot of people don't like to address it because they feel like, well, I don't need that. I'm not there. But nobody wants to address these things when they're in a crisis. So if you think about the investment of putting in a couple of grab bars or maybe just a, you know, changing, um, if let's say you have a step in tub, those are, those are just not, not safe. There are ways we actually have a vendor that we have tremendous trust and respect for who can, who can actually cut the tub and make a walk through without having to do a major bathroom renovation. It doesn't mean that you have to now put in a whole, whole new bathroom. There are ways to make it accessible and safe uh, while maintaining the integrity of the space with, with which you, you're comfortable. Does anyone have any questions? We're talking at you a lot. Or we can address well, them in the end. the end, because there's yeah. everyone's muted right now. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, that, yeah, save it to the end. Okay, guess. sorry. Just trying to be polite. <laughs> I know it's hard when you're not getting any um, <laughs> audience, okay. but you know, a lot of you know, we've gone over this. You could do, um, you could thumbs up, thumbs down if you want to do. You could wave to Deb. Well, you can't really because they're on the screen. They're share screening. Um, or you could put a comment on the side if you want to get involved. Um, so we have a lot of simple solutions that we love to share with, with people. And they don't cost a lot, a lot of money. And they're... Um, they're simple and they're easy. And I know my, my own parents know some of these because I'm, I'm, I, I, I love sharing them with anyone. But some, one of my favorite accessories that I've even gotten Michelle to love is it's a, a behind the door hanging clear organizer. And while it's meant to be for, yeah, yeah. Here, we'll show you what it looks like. While it's meant to be used for, for shoes, um, we love it for, um, no, we love it. F uh, you'll see it on the right. I mean, here they have like spices and stuff in it. But if you put it behind your door uh, in your, or in your closet, you can keep your keys, you can keep your phone cords, you can keep uh, anything and you'll always know where it is. People love keeping their checkbooks there. They love to keep, um, you know, important. Uh, sometimes people keep their medications there so they can see them or keep them um, organized. Cords, yeah. wires. So, um, so and then here's this electric kettle in the center that we were talking about. Um, the on. Well, let's go back to the last slide, and we'll come back to here. No, to the left. To the left. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, wear a waterproof personal alert device. We're not sure, we don't understand why a lot of people, a lot of our clients are against having these, these 
personal alert devices. I know, you know, each of you has a lot of friends or you have a lot of family or people who care about you. Why would you not want to give yourself an opportunity if you're in harm's way to have somebody know? There are too many times where a senior falls and their phone is in their hand and they fall and the phone goes flying. And we hear stories about they're found a few, you know, hours later on the bathroom floor because they couldn't reach anybody. And it doesn't have to be that way. If you're going to consider these life alerts, which we, again, we're big advocates for, and we love to share information with you, make sure it's waterproof so that, again, you can take it into the shower without any problems. Um, your medications, you know, it's, it's sometimes it's difficult to manage your expect to manage your medications. Put alerts on your on your phone. I know my mother's probably laughing at me because she would have bells going off left, right, and center. But whatever it's going to take for you to keep up and have your independence, use all the tools that you can find. They don't have to cost any money or even a lot of money. Can I go on with the um, sure. Oh, the holster. Uh, yeah, the holster cell phone. Um, so for women, uh, that's another picture we should have. Yeah. Uh, for women, Deborah and I actually both use these. It has, it connects right to the phone. They're fantastic. And you can just wear it, um, as like a purse all day. It has my credit cards in it. They're fantastic. And it's attached to you. So if God forbid there is a fall, it's going to be with you. So those are, they're really, really great. We can send Judith, we can send you a link to, it's called a bandolier. Um, are the ones that we have, but you can get a lot of different kinds on Amazon. They're fantastic. And they, and your phone won't fall in the toilet ever. Right. Ever. Again, ever. <laughs> um, I just sent one to my dad that's more masculine, I guess, but um, there's a lot of different, a lot of different products out there and all of these things you can get on, on Amazon. Um, the smoke detectors have them checked and, in, or installed. Uh, let's go to the next slide. We'll show you some of the other things that we were talking about. Medications. Um, to the left, you'll see this medication blister pack. A lot of people, for some reason, don't know about this, but your pharmacy or your insurance will cover these kinds of uh, pill dispen 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 dispensaries mm -hmm. uh, so that instead of going through the bottles like you see on the bottom, it'll show you that the top blister is Monday morning and then it goes down the the um, the day uh, and throughout the week. And for some people, these are phenomenal. They're great tools to not have to say, oh, wait, did I take that one? Uh, everyone has a different system. This one we think is great. The only issue we have with it is when you open it, sometimes if you're not careful, the pills can go flying. So you have to be careful where you, how you open them. Um, you, can, you can flip it over over a, a small bowl and push it in and then they can just go straight into the bowl. I think we need Judy's um, yeah, Zoom right. class. <laughs> um, well, let's talk about the, the, the clear, clear, yeah, the jewelry <laughs> organizer at the bottom here. Um, we just gave this to one of our clients. She loves, loves it. <laughs> so many times people think they've lost their jewelry. Someone stole their jewelry. Jo Jay is always amazed by when I'm sure someone stole something. They, re they, they return it because I find it. <laughs> but you can hang necklaces. And this is, it's easy to find. You hang it in your clothes. They're, they're terrific. Um, and to the left, as you can see, is the microwave on the countertop. Um, and, and then that's, that's it. It's really kind of simple. Um, this is who we are and, uh, oh, and we really love what we do. Um, and, and, 